This animation has been produced to support care home staff, residents and their families in light of the publication of the numbers of deaths in individual care homes in the UK. Why were care homes so badly affected during the pandemic? And how can we better protect them in the future? Care homes are places of communal living where residents spend much of their time in lounges, socialising with other residents, staff and visitors. They are a hive of activity, with lots of group activities and visiting performers. Staff include care assistants, managers and sometimes general and mental health nurses. Other professionals like GPs, district nurses and psychologists also visit regularly. It's no exaggeration to say that COVID-19 has had a devastating impact on care homes. Restrictions have meant that loved ones and some professionals have been unable to visit, communal activities stopped, and residents spent a lot of time isolating alone in their rooms. Care staff have had to perform end-of-life care to residents that they've known for a long time, whilst wearing PPE and social distancing from each other. Between the 20th of March 2020 and the 2nd of April 2021, there were 42,341 COVID-19 related deaths in care homes. Let's look at some of the potential causes for these high death rates using this pie chart. We've decided to place the residents, their families and the staff members at its centre, the people most affected. Now let's add the slices. The virus, the resources, the policies and the environment. Let's look at each piece in more detail. The virus is highly contagious and easily spread especially during the sort of intimate care tasks that staff support with. Staff need to go from resident to resident to provide this essential support. It's a respiratory disease, which disproportionately affected residents due to their age and health conditions. COVID-19 has also been shown to be particularly deadly for those with dementia. The virus is new, and at the beginning of the pandemic, we had very little idea about how to prevent and treat it. Some people don't experience the usual cough or fever. Some people can have atypical symptoms, such as subtle changes in behavior, which delayed treatment. Others had no symptoms at all, which meant the virus could spread without people knowing. Resources at the start of the pandemic were scarce and care homes struggled to get reliable access to PPE. There was competition for limited resources, including with the NHS. There were also difficulties getting testing equipment for both staff and residents. Restricted access meant that many visits from health professionals stopped. This left homes isolated, increased the workload for care home staff and prevented residents from receiving their usual level of care. Policies were often published with very little notice or time to prepare. They weren't specific enough or weren't appropriate for some care home settings and sometimes they were contradictory. The most devastating policy was the decision to release thousands of NHS patients into care homes with unknown COVID status or even positive for COVID-19. This essentially transported the virus into the care sector and then locked it down inside the homes. The layout of some care homes meant the virus could spread easily and social distancing in narrow corridors was difficult. Many residents needed to spend a large part of their day alone in their bedrooms. This was particularly hard for people with dementia, who would forget why it was so important for them to stay in their rooms. In the midst of all this are the people. Many, if not all, residents are vulnerable and have struggled with the restrictions and lack of socialising. Social distancing and PPE have also made it harder to form their usual good relationships with staff. They've been coping with this whilst also seeing other residents, often their close friends, die around them. Many families have been highly stressed by not being able to see their loved one and coping with the possibility that they may never see them again. Staff and managers have felt undervalued and abandoned during the pandemic, often comparing themselves unfavourably to NHS staff. Many were scared of getting the virus and passing it on to colleagues, residents and families. Many are experiencing depression, anxiety and PTSD symptoms. However, they've also shared their positive experiences of teamwork and resilience. As you can see, 
there are very many reasons for the deaths in our care homes. No one thing is to blame. But armed with this information, we need to take steps to reduce the impact of this deadly virus going forward. Going forward, we must build, rebuild and nurture our relationships with our care homes. We must listen to the experiences and needs of staff and residents and hear the uncomfortable truths of what it has been like to care through COVID. We must ensure health systems work collaboratively and policies should promote joint working. Past competition was unhelpful and we should be generous in sharing resources, knowledge and skills. We should continue to use technology to promote new ways of working. We need to praise care home staff's role as key workers. Homes should be supported to seek individual and team psychological support, particularly around grief and bereavement, depression, anxiety and PTSD. Staff should also be supported to set up peer support models. A healthy work-life balance should be promoted and managers should try to limit excessive overtime and ensure there's adequate time and space for breaks. We must continue to offer training and guidance to care homes when requested, for example in infection prevention control or behaviour that challenges. We must provide clear and detailed guidance that's specific to care home settings. And as we move forward into that future, we stand with care homes. <laughs>